G'day, Brandon. How are you doing? Hey, how's it going? Uh, it's going well. It's pretty crazy, crazy world right now. How's it all? How's it all crazy going on your side? Surviving? Yeah, going pretty well. Yes, yeah, surviving. That's it. Um, I'm kind of lucky in a sense that uh, I just <laughs> I make YouTube videos, so yeah. nothing's stopping me from doing that. I'm at home every day anyway so yeah. it's actually not too my life isn't too disrupted thankfully um but yeah it you, is don't a crazy kids, time. you don't have kids you don't have kids no i don't have kids no, no. <laughs> i've got nothing see, to worry about as you can see i'm working from home so um it's 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 amazing situation right now it's really like mm. not worrying i just you know i had a mate reach out to me and they were had 40 people two months ago at work and now they've got nine it's just yeah, it's, nine. It's, really, it's really it's really rough out there so it's really interesting to see how quickly it hit the markets too it was like instant it's like as yeah. soon as this just came i i reckon as soon as it left china this this problem with the virus just markets just started tanking straight after that and it's surprising to see how quickly it's happening too like just how sharp how steep yeah. i looked at a chart the other day where it was like comparing the rate of decline and obviously it's, it's jumped a little bit now yeah. but it was it was comparing the rate of decline in the markets now versus the 08 09 crash oh, yeah. and it was happening far quicker now than what it was back then so yeah big blip that i've seen in my investing lifetime so yeah it's, it's interesting to experience it yeah no i remember 0809 quite clearly um i started my career yeah. at october in 07 so right. got the end of the bull market and then stuff started unraveling wow. i mean that was a real structural shift in the you know in the um in the markets and the way banks priced and all this is literally this it's taken everyone by storm in you know a matter of months. It's um yeah, it's pretty mm. it's really interesting. I mean, there's a lot of pain out there. It's really sad. Um, yeah. Let's hope we can all pull through. Yeah, definitely. It's yes. kind of weird thinking about it like that because you see you see the markets go down and and I'm mostly like oh you know this is such a, an exciting opportunity like opportunity mm. opportunity opportunity and then you're like actually two sides to the coin like. The reason there is a reason that the market's going down that's because business is going to be affected and people are going to lose jobs and they're like oh should i actually be getting excited about this maybe it's a bit insensitive of me <laughs> yeah i don't know i mean i think the market's a really important part of the ecosystem ultimately you know there are companies out there that are pushing for vaccines businesses yeah. need capital now if you don't have them uh, my take is if you don't have the market you don't have a key part of the ecosystem to fund the future growth of businesses and uh, to allow entrepreneurs and people that are you know trying to move the world forward to get access to capital, so it's an important part. Yeah. You know, the, the companies that are looking for vaccines, they're listed. Some of them are listed companies, and their funding and their research is driven by capital markets. So it plays yeah. a really important part of uh, of that ecosystem. So, and that's my take on it. Obviously, like capitalism is one part, but it doesn't always work. But in mm. a sense, that's what it's trying to achieve. But um, no, I mean, obviously, that's the preamble. But it was, it's just really good to have you on and chat and. Already here. Yeah, thanks for your take. Yeah, thanks for inviting me on. It's it's oh, good to be good. on and having a chat to you again. Yeah, no, it's great. It's great. I mean, Brian from our team marketing has been pushing this, and it's been uh, like a great idea. Um, mm. he, he called it uh, stocks and socks. So I just want to confirm that I've got my finest on. What have you got for? Oh, wow, well, classic bonds. Well, you're classic bonds. Good Aussie. Good Aussie. Well, mine are mine are a gift from. Um, one of the nannies that looked after my little my little kid, my middle child. Um, she's Spanish, oh, right. actually, yep. so her, her family's going through quite a bit. But um, mm. they're, they're tacos. So I mean, that's obviously Mexican, but she um, she picked them up. She she knows I like those sort of like higher than ankle socks. So they are uh, right. I'm, I'm representing today. <laughs> oh, they're more exciting than my socks. <laughs> yeah, no, yours are good old classic. You're supporting a you know great Australian company. Good on you. Yeah, I'll take um, it. <laughs> No, I think that you know the way we want to run these and just to chat is just to see what you know what's happening. I mean, obviously you've got like mm. a really strong user base, so you know they obviously love what you do, and we do too. So I just want to get your take on you know what you know what what are your what are your listeners and watchers? What are they doing? What are they seeing? What are they asking about the markets right now? Yeah, I think the main thing that I'm getting, I guess, a lot of my content's geared towards helping people start out in the markets. Uh, so the main questions and kind of comments that I'm getting at the moment are, you know, what, how do I start? Uh, that's, that's pretty classic. 
Yeah. And I think there are a lot of people in that boat because we've seen just stocks go up and up and up and up. And maybe people are just feeling like stocks are getting just more and more overvalued just generally, or the market's getting more and more overvalued and we're never going to get an opportunity to get in at a good price. And then all of a sudden it's happened so quickly, like what we were saying that people like, Oh, it's kind of taken them by surprise. They're wondering how do I get into the market? And I, I feel like, what I'm saying to people at the moment, even from my limited experience, is before you get into the market, just something that's that's logical, but for some reason people kind of forget about it, is just make sure that you you know what you want to achieve when you're going about investing. So I feel like one of the biggest traps people run into is that they start out and they, you know, they get this opportunity and they just think, you know, I've got maybe 5K on the sidelines. So let's just get into the market and, you know, just, I'm just going to be an investor, but they don't really, they haven't really taken the time to think about what they want to get out of their investing. Like what's their investing horizon? Do they want to be invested for, you know, 12 months and they're trying to make like 20% or do they want to be invested for 10 years and, and they want to set themselves up for maybe later in life. So yeah, that's probably the main thing I'm seeing is just saying to people, look, before you start, even though you, you might be presented with this opportunity, is just take a step back, maybe take a couple of breaths and just think about what you're actually trying to achieve. And and I think the, the, the one thing I take from that is I learn a lot, um, is that it's, investing is a craft. It takes time to learn. Yeah. You've got you to develop it. And also you've got to invest your personality, you know, Someone who's got great patience and doesn't want to be overly active may want a more passive approach and just, you know, has a 20, 30 yeah. year time horizon. Whereas someone who wants, you know, who's, you know, can't handle the ups and downs all the time, wants to be in and out just so they can move from investments to cash back to investments. It's, you've got to understand who you are as a person. Do you, do you get a lot of those things? Yeah, I, I guess so. It's, it's definitely, you do, you do have to think about, from my experience, you have to think about what you yeah what you want to achieve or, or what you feel like you could realistically do with your investing because a lot of people just look coffee, at the market yeah. go for it <laughs> i'm not well, a coffee drinker, so no it's what it's I've got, to. I'm, I'm listening intently sorry i got classic water um what was my train of thought there oh yeah that's right sorry. it's just um a lot of people you know they see the market and they know that the stock market is a great way reliable way to build long-term wealth um, but they don't really like reading annual reports or looking at businesses and, and yada, yada. And it's, it's important to realize that there's still something that you can do and benefit from the market, like what you're saying, more of that passive investing approach um, where basically your, your strategy is not to beat the market by picking individual stocks, but it's just to, to be invested, be literally participating in the market and just trusting the long-term, you know, historical returns of the market trusting that you know over the next 50 years australian or american or wherever you know australian business will perform well like it has done the last 50 and yeah. and kind of follow that just participate and follow that trend over time or you could if you're someone that's super interested and you're like oh man i want to look into you know facebook or i want to look into apple or something like that then you can also be a long-term investor investing in individual stocks but you just have to be prepared that you have to spend a lot more time kind yeah, of reading more. annual reports and yeah, yeah. like, yeah, really getting an understanding for what you're investing in. That's another classic rule of investing. Don't invest in something you don't understand. Um, but it's, it's super interesting. Like that's the thing with investing is there's so many different strategies. There's probably a, a really reliable proven strategy, no matter who you are. Yeah. You just got to no, find it. Yeah. I think that's what's so amazing about the markets is there's something for everyone. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you know the way you see the world. If you know, if you think this is, you know, this is going to pass like right now, and you think, look, I just think that you know Apple's got X amount of cash and it's going to be around forever, and this is just an amazing opportunity to buy. Like some people think that, whether it's right or wrong, is yeah, you know, you can do that <laughs> if you feel like the world's going to go down further, and I feel like there's an opportunity for me to, you know, to hedge my position because I've got long equities and I want to get in a position that protects me against that, you can do whatever you want. And so mm. the, the most amazing thing about the market is like you're in that Colosseum and if you're in there, you're yeah. participating and you're learning and you're developing and you're not just a, yeah. you know, like a spectator, you're actually in there developing your craft and you know, just being part of that ecosystem and you know, just being able to meet people and talk about it. It's a little bit like that's a sport, good fun. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. Just, you know, it just adds a little bit more to your life. So that's what I love about it, just that camaraderie and that sense that you're always developing and you're know, challenging yourself. and. It doesn't matter what your strategy is. I mean, there are tennis players that are, you know, 
that hit the ball, you know, they just try to hit winners straight away and there was guys that try to grind the other one down. So yeah. it's much like the investing. It's like you can be long-term, short-term, you can swing trade, you can momentum, you can trade options. So there's so many there's a lot of options. To do it. There literally are a lot of options. So yeah. that, that's what's so amazing about, it, I think, your community is that people are coming in like at, through the door and then they can choose different paths. So do you sort of mm. see people progressing once they start with you and, you know, get into the market and they find actually my niche is in this or my niche is in that? Do you see that? Yeah, yeah. De- oh, definitely, for sure. Um, people... You know, that's probably for positive and negative reasons why it's good and not good to be an investing-based YouTuber is because there are so many different options. And, of course, everyone's a keyboard warrior and they, they love to tell you which is the right approach. But I think that's important is to remember that with something like investing, there are so many different approaches. And you might start... Um, you might start on one approach and then realise that it's not for you and you move to a different approach. Um, yeah, it's... For, for me personally, I probably in hindsight incorrectly started out being very much an active investor probably before i knew really what i was doing um not saying that i know exactly yeah, because of your personality do you think or just yeah, because yeah I, I think maybe it was just yeah you know you read a couple of stock market books and and they fill you full uh, of confidence because that's what sells in a book <laughs> and uh, and maybe uh, you, you, you kind of think you're invincible as a young 20 year old man you are, right? <laughs> and, yeah and then uh, I just made a couple of, of investments early on that I really didn't know enough about I didn't really understand what I was getting myself into that's a, a big rule that I follow now um, and so my investing style has changed I, I kind of realized that okay I better learn to do this properly so I started started myself up partly passive investing um, to, to be kind of that fallback cushion in case the active investing doesn't work out. Um, then I really dug in learning about like uh, Warren Buffett's kind of way of going about it with the whole understanding the business, finding businesses with competitive advantages, strong management teams and, and valuing them and looking for margin of safety prices and going along. I learned a lot more about that and that's kind yeah. of... I still follow both of those strategies. Like I've still got that ETF market tracking portfolio and then I've got that more active style Warren Buffett kind of model that I follow as well. And what are you doing now? Are you doing anything like personally? Are you doing anything in the market? Yeah, I've, I've been... I've been buying a little bit over the last uh, month or so. I, I follow, I, I'm really focused on just watching companies that I feel like I can understand or that rest in my circle of competence and being still relatively new to investing in the grand scheme of things. That circle of competence is like Warren Buffett's where he can talk yeah. about any you know, sector yeah. industry that he wants. Um, so I'm, I'm focusing in on a few companies and you know some of them have hit prices that I'm comfortable with in the last little while. Some of them haven't um, as well as that. So I'm doing kind of that side of my portfolio and I'm still buying, you know, market tracking ETFs as, as that really long term set yourself up for a time and passive investing approach. So yeah, I've been doing a little bit, but um, yeah, mainly buying. I don't really sell them. I'm, I'm a net buyer of stocks. That's my mentality. <laughs> I think most people are. Um, any stocks? In the US for you know for our audience that um you know just maybe interested in having a look, not necessarily financial advice, but you know what are you, what are you doing? Uh, yeah, you definitely, know? definitely not financial advice. But I mean most of the companies that I look at are over in the States, just because um for me that's where my circle of competence rests a little bit more, that's where my interests lie a little bit more. Um I have no interest in mining companies or banks, which is very much you know the Australian economy, um, but you throw a company like Facebook. I'm pulling my phone out of my pocket every five minutes on Facebook, so obviously I'm, I'm you know, I've got a little bit of knowledge yeah. about that company even before I look at the financials. Um, you know, you think about a company like Disney. I mean, I've got Disney Plus over there on the TV, and I watch a show, so I've got that little bit of baseline knowledge about, say, a company like Disney or Netflix. Um, it's, it's those kind of companies or Adobe, like I'm a YouTuber, all my editing, I do it on, you know, Adobe Photoshop and Premiere Pro. So naturally, just from my interests and my general circle of competence, I tend to look more to the US, not because I, you know, I'm making a big bet on the US over Australia. Yeah. That's just where my interests are. Great, awesome. So thanks for having a brokerage platform that allows me to invest in US <laughs> stocks. Well, this is, this is exactly <laughs> I appreciate it. No, absolute pleasure. I mean, my, my, my background is pretty similar. I was in the US at Optivate Trading Firm and 
Uh, I was obviously yeah. doing some more sophisticated stuff on the options side, but when I was there, you know, Netflix was just, you know, was on its tear and everyone was like, when's this thing going to fall? And, you know, I was ordering DVDs right. at the time um, to my place in Chicago. Facebook had listed towards the back end of my trip. Amazon was getting delivered. It was just like, and then I got back to Australia, I was like, this is just ludicrous. I mean, how the, how am I, yeah. like, I tried to open an account, it was like 60 bucks a trade, there was like paperwork here and there. It's it's horrible. Like, like, I remember, what, if, like I opened my. A, if I come from a trading firm as a partner in a trading firm, and I can't even do this, and how's an <laughs> investor off the street going to make it happen? Yeah, I was looking at uh, I think Comsec International, and when I first started out um, investing overseas in the US, I think their brokerage, uh, their broker international brokerage was like fifty dollars. It's like fifty bucks for one trade pay that on the way in and the way out. And that's brutal, especially for a beginner that realistically doesn't have, you know, a million dollars that they're looking to invest. And in. it's, it's pretty rough. Yeah, no, that's so yeah, look, the cost brokerage. Love it. But we're here pretty <laughs> much. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, no, great. Well, obviously, yeah. you know, like, you know, your, your audience is obviously probably pretty interested in what we're sort of seeing on the platform. And um, yeah, definitely. That's one of the questions. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah, that's one of the questions I was going to ask you actually is um, from behind the curtain over at stake, um, kind of what are the trends that you guys are, are seeing at the moment with the markets being super turbulent? We've seen like a month now of them tanking and a week of them really picking up. Um, what are you guys seeing? Where, where is the money kind of flowing into and out of across maybe different industries or stocks or, or what are you seeing? Well, first of all, it's not much of a curtain. It's my study. Um, it's, your, can, yeah. it's a wall. It's a wall. <laughs> it's a wall and a door and a couple of chairs. Um, you know, quite, you know, we, we see different, so many different things. There's been a few thematic changes, but overall people are doing what they always do. So there are people that will historically okay. buy and buy ETFs. You know, I know a person that says, and every time the S&P drops 5%, I'm just going to put in, you know, like everyone's got their own strategy, which is what we spoke about. So it's great. Yeah. But the real thematics we're seeing is a movement towards um, some of these ETFs that allow you to generate returns when the market is a little bit more turbulent. Um, mm. A lot of people are either hedging a position, so they're buying inverse ETFs. So these are exotic products, right. so they're definitely not for everyone. They're, they're quite complex in their pricing, so I just want to disclaim mm. that one. Um, yeah. So on the market falls, a lot of these ETFs go up in value. Um, and on the yeah. Aussie and New Zealand market and... You know, even in markets outside the US, you know, there's not, there are sort of these options in the local markets. They're not very liquid and they're not dynamic. Um, and then right. you've got the currency hedge. People want to be like, they want to be long USD and they want to trade uh, on the short side of the market. So that, that, that's, that's been a big movement. We've seen, it's, it's honestly insane. We've seen a 30 times increase in some of those names, which is just out of this world. Wow. Well, at the same time, we've only seen, this is since Jan 1, we've seen a yeah. two times increase in, in net investing into like the Facebooks, the Apples, the you know the Netflix, the Fangs, pretty much the Berkshires. Fangs, so it's yeah. a real increase in those. That that's the general thematic that I could probably say is is pretty clear. And there's, it's buying out and selling. You know, people that have had this thing like the market's too hot, I'm going to get short here, and selling out when when the market really just took a dive in you know in February yeah. and March, uh, March mainly. Mm. Um, but then some people are picking up stocks like Zoom and um, Teledoc and DocuSign that are making 52-week highs because they're, right. they're structured to succeed during these sort of conditions. And, and like, it's just a lot of people picking the eyes out of stocks at the moment. It's, it's pretty fascinating. Yeah, that's, that's very interesting. Um, one question I also had, because one thing that I have no experience in is the, the short term aspect of investing, the, the kind of more trading focus of investing because all of my positions, I'm always a long-term investor. So one of the questions that I had from you knowing your background and experience is, is what, what's the general sentiment from someone that's a short term investor or a trader um, when the market is super volatile, like it has been, is, is it a, an environment where traders go, Oh, I love it. Like this is good for us traders volatility, or is it a time where most traders kind of take a step back and just write, just wait a little bit. Um, what's the kind of overarching strategy with that? Yeah. I mean, look, it's, there's so many different types. It's like an investor could be passive. It yeah. could be, you know, semi-regular. 
I actually like to look at everyone as a trader because ultimately you need a place to trade. So I consider you a trader and this seems to be a subset right. of how often you do yeah. it. Because um, ultimately, if you're yeah. investing, you still need a place to trade. So um, True. You know, my background, I was at <laughs> a high frequency trading firm. So that may give you the sense that I'm short term. But my personal philosophy is like, I don't have the patience of a Warren Buffett. I wish I did. Um, I've definitely got a lot of work to do and a lot more meditation to, to get under my, um, un underneath, but, um, i just, yeah. So, you know, I'm probably too hyperactive to, to maintain, um, that balance that you need to be a super long-term investor. I wish I had it. Uh, so my approach is generally momentum based. So I want to be, I want to ride the wave for a period of time where the strength is on that side. So, you know, that's my personal View, but a lot of people may look at the market now and go like, you know, like even in Australia, they saw after they hit $8 and they're like, that's ludicrous. I'm buying it. And then the next day it's, mm. you know, next three, within a week, it's trading at more than doubles. So they made a hundred percent. So a lot of people that would right. say I'm buying after paid $8, um, even though I'm talking about the Aussie market or $9, whatever it is. Yeah. Of course, I'm trading at 20. You may just be like, well, that's enough for me. I'm out. So there are people yeah. that play these markets. I generally like to sit in cash and just wait and see. That's <laughs> I don't. Right. You know, okay. It's a little bit like cricket in a way, or baseball. Like you just got to wait for the right thing to, you know, you play everything on its merits yeah. in a way. So that's why I look at it. Um, but everyone's wait different. for it to be in your zone. Yeah, exactly. So everyone's a little bit different. I mean, we're seeing we, as a brokerage, you see everything, and you know that's everyone's right. You know, we we should never judge how they trade uh, or invest. Mm. Um, they've really got to do what's best for them. So, but you know, when volatility yeah. comes, people, you know, people are more active. There's just there's just more. There's more opportunities being thrown out, however you look at it, whether right. it be like the market's going further south, this is worse than it is. I think the market's underpricing the risk of this thing. Um, yeah. Or, or, the, or the market's gone loopy, like this will recover because we're over in 12 months time or six months time, whatever it is, and then things will be back to normal uh, or a vaccine yeah. can come out quicker. So everyone's got different opinions. That's what's so amazing about um, you know, the market is that exactly the same event can trigger so many different reactions. Uh, and to be able to mm. try to keep your, try to be the, you know, the way I look at it is try to be the eye of the storm while all this panic is happening. It's just like being laser sharp about what you're trying yeah. to achieve. And, that, and that's a skill. So the, that's what it's about. It is mastering your emotions. <laughs> I think being no, a psychologist would be um, the best, best background for investing. I, I, I would definitely agree with you actually there. It's remarkable how you can have a strategy set on paper and when, you know, things start hitting the fan, <laughs> then all of a sudden that strategy for one reason or another, it's just your emotions. It just goes out the window and all of a sudden you're caught up in this, in this, you know, media, you know, hype or fear or whatever. And it's, it's just remarkable. That's actually why I, 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 I tend to say to people that are new, just if you're going into the markets, just, just know what you're trying to achieve. Cause if you, if you have a strategy set before you start, then at least when all this, when you're hearing these articles or media headlines or news reports, then at least you can kind of go back to your strategy and kind of see through it a little bit. Um, but the, another thing I wanted to talk to you about with your, um, with your experience as more of a momentum trader, um, what are some of the indicators that you, or that momentum traders tend to look at to help them kind of watch that flow of money into and out of stocks or, you know, sectors or industries? Yeah. I mean, obviously price, you look at a chart, you know, I don't know the time and inclination to go read reports. They, they definitely help if, you know, that if that's yeah. how you invest. But for me, it's really just the price and volume. I like to see price okay. moving in it. I like to see price moving up and volume move what, whatever direction it is, price moving in yeah. one direction and volume matching it. So, when there's updates, okay. is, is, is there volume moving with it as well? Are, are right. people actually buying to force it up or is it literally just lack of liquidity that's moving the stock up? So what we saw really right. recently was the market tanked. If you looked at the futures volume and the equities volume, the market tanked on really big volume. And then the last week it trickled up. It was on volume was actually really low. And on the day that it hit its high, in terms of recovery, the volume was at its lowest and then it just came straight back down. So it just shows me ah. the strength that's on the sell side. So those are the sort of triggers that I look for. But everyone's different. People look at, you know, moving averages, which is which is basically just a, a derivative of those things anyway. Yeah. Um, you know, MACD, all sorts of different, you know, people look at, you know, um, 
I don't even know what people look at these days. You know, they look at EMAs, which is exponential. They put similar moving averages. Um, they look at Elliott Wave. People do all sorts of different things. But for me, it's through that. I just look at price and volume and just try to create a bit of a picture as to where the strength is. Yeah. How did you initially learn about these sort of indicators and whatnot? Is it something that you say like learned at university or is it something that you just had to research yourself and pick up? How, how do, how do people kind of get that initial knowledge of the momentum indicators kind of way of trading? I feel like opening my cupboard because there's like a big library in here. It's just uh, books. Yeah. Cause that's, that's what I, I did with long-term investing is that I just read books by investors that had done it. Yeah. And I felt like surely this can't be the way that people learn about this. Surely there's like a university course that you have to go to or something, but uh, I've learned most of it just by studying the best investors in the world. Yeah, is that similar amazing, to yeah. what? No, exactly the same. I mean, it's amazing. Right. That people share it's an amazing community people people look at investing not as like obviously it's there to make money but it's actually there to develop you and people that are amazing you know the people that have taken the time to write books uh the great investors that have just dedicated their time to educate others and that's a, an amazing gift you can give people um so i take the time to read it. i just read whatever i can get my hands on i remember going to the library and it was me and like seven year olds lining up in the investing section uh you <laughs> can't go to a library now unfortunately but there are some great books you can order and look it's just yeah. that's like it's like anything you can't be a brain surgeon overnight it's the same with investing you just gotta put the effort in right okay so just learn what you can and then just chip away at your craft over time absolutely so yeah no, i'm like, like it's it's just like anything else you just gotta work hard at it i mean the I'm definitely not an expert, but I, I enjoy and I learn. I enjoy learning. So I assume it's the same yeah, as yeah. people that are, you know, that your your viewers and subscribers that are are starting off. It's an amazing journey, and just to try and enjoy it and you know make it a, a lifelong craft, and you'll get a lot out of it. Yeah, yeah, right. No, I agree. Uh, well, I think we're we're actually going to wrap up in, in terms of time. So, but yeah, that was yeah, good. Yeah, no, it's just amazing to chat and like you know, honestly, just congratulations on everything you've achieved. Obviously, we've been in touch for a while. Yeah, um, no, thanks very much. And you too. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a long road ahead for both of us, but I'm, I'm happy we're doing it. So. <laughs> it's exciting. <laughs> we'll be safe as well. Yeah, you too. Okay, cheers, Brandon. All right, see ya. Okay, bye.